All right, folks, my name is from Melbourne. With us today, we have one and only Trevor of the Black Dahlia Murder. How are you doing today, buddy? Good, man. Just uh, sitting at home. Just got back from Mexico uh, last night and uh, just relaxing here and uh, getting ready to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely correct. The reason being that I recently got to know that the next record, The Nightbringers, is turned out to be the record-breaking pre-orders being done on Metal Blades till date. So that's a that's a huge, huge number to be honest. So congratulations for that. Oh, thanks, man. That's definitely something I couldn't have predicted, you know. So this is a very exciting happening. Absolutely. And especially in the current, uh, you know, the, the scene in the industry where the CD sales are dropping, here you have pre-orders getting better and better so that totally indicates that fans are extremely waiting for nightbringers to release uh yeah man it's very very cool um i think they just uh they're trying to help us out man they want to see it happen for us and um they're coming together in an awesome way you already unleashed the title track the video is already out how's been the feedback so far uh, it's been really good. You know, I think that that's a lot to do with the excitement right now. Uh, I think people dig the new song in the video. I think uh, they like the new guitar player, Brandon, and his lead on it. So I th And I've seen mostly uh, positive feedback. You know, I found myself getting a little choked up when I was uh, investigating and just seeing the unanimous praise, you know. So it just feels amazing right now. It feels like all the stars are aligned for us. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. While listening to the record from past couple of weeks, one thing was pretty much, you know, right from the very first minute I started listening to the first song, I could easily feel that the record has, you know, stylistically, it's it's rooted, rooted in the classic sound that you guys are known for. It is a great songwriting in it. I would say refined songwriting in a tighter musicianship than any of your previous albums and i'm sure you guys must have worked really hard on this keeping in mind that you know the black dolly murder has a great catalog of quality metal albums and then again there's fan expectations uh yeah it's it's crazy man you know we we've uh had a really good run in the last few albums i think the fans have been pleased and you know we've seen growth from album to album but uh, yeah, it's pressure. It's pressure to um, to have a good track record like that. You know what I mean? And you want to keep it up. You want to impress. But I think uh, Brandon coming into the fold here was a really big shot of energy into the band. And uh, I think you know he he wrote some awesome songs for the album. But I think that the rest of us just responded to his coming in in a good way. You know, a lot of excitement from our camp and. Uh, yeah, I feel really strongly about this record. You know, I feel like it still has uh, Black Dahlia Murder sound at its core, but there are a lot of new elements coming in and a lot of uh, new touches that Brandon brought into the fold, you know. So I'm very proud. I feel like this is our, our, our proudest moment and um, so far, you know what I mean? So I'm really excited for it to get into more people's ears. Absolutely, man. I love how you guys have this um, wonderful way of starting the record. You know, right off the bat... You know, be it deflorates, you know, the, the Black Whaler or even Ever Blacks, you know, in hell uh, is where she waits for me. Nightbringers also open up with Widowmaker. So there's this phenomenal thing in you guys that you guys always start with a lot of vengeance in it. I love the solo Brandon has come up with this. And obviously your vocals are in out of the world. A perfect opening track. Was this written at the beginning stages of songwriting or it came somewhere in the middle and you guys realized that, there you go, this is the first one on the record? Um, actually, it was the last song written and uh, we felt, we there were a lot of great songs, but we felt like, uh, you know, we needed like a classic opener that just sets the album up, you know, and so uh, Brian felt a little pressure, I think, because we were like, okay, now just go ahead and write the opening song, you know, <laughs> no big deal. But uh, he respond, you know, he came back with that song, and I was like, "Wow, this is really, really sick," you know. And uh, so, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. It's a very catchy tune. I think it's a little different than some of the openers we have. It's not as outwardly fast, you know. Uh, but I do think it's super, super, super catchy, and uh, very proud of that one. I want to talk about the artwork. Kind of gives me a nocturnal 2.0 sort of a feeling, although you know that is slightly superficial comparison but it does 
sort of made me feel that that you know you guys did the nocturnal 10th anniversary tour so has there been some sort of inspiration from that record while playing it in its entirety and maybe some of the tracks some of the vibes came in onto this record as well uh well you know we didn't really have it in our heads that we were gonna do nocturnal until this album was already done and written and and recorded but the artwork definitely was a nod to you know what we've done in the past going back to christian and uh you know i just figured 10 years later uh you know the anniversary definitely was a part of that and uh you know i I take the artwork very seriously and you know it's always on my shoulders to uh select the artists and stuff and uh, you know i've tried to use someone different every time to kind of keep the fans guessing so I, I thought that maybe, you know, doing this would be a surprise in itself. You know, I didn't think people would be expecting us to return to Christian. And, um, you know, just I wanted it to have a classically Black Dahlia look, but, um, you know, also be new, too. So it's kind of uh, the best of both worlds, I think, in that regard. And, you know, it was uh, it's like bringing things full circle for us. You know, it was the first time that we had cool artwork was Nocturnal. It was the first time we could afford uh, a painted artwork, you know, so um, just a small nod to the fans to see who's paying attention out there, you know. Right, man. And always, your lyrics are something that have been extremely impressive. You know, although, you know, you're challenging subjects that are, let's say, uncommon in death metal, but your ability to write some incredibly dark, memorable, and that sort of a poetry to match the music is unparalleled. I can give you a perfect example of the of the first single itself that's released, Nightbringers, where you're talking about the, the almost stagnant subject of Christianity and that somehow your lyrics make me feel refreshing. And at no point it feels to me that, that you know, you're just going through the motions. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you know, it, I mean, that song is, is real to me. You know, I feel it's not just Christianity, but, but religion overall. You know, uh, I think that uh, that humans have just gone down the wrong course with that. You know, I think that we're better than than that. I think that it's uh, you know people need to rely on themselves and and live while they're here on Earth. You know, and not so it's it is a total stagnant subject, and it is definitely something driven into the ground by death metal. But um, you know, I wanted it to be the message to be plain as day for people. You know what I mean, and. Uh, I I really like that song, and I really like how it came out, for sure. Awesome, man. And, you know, uh, talking about Brandon, and like you said, you know, he's very young, and he had to fill in a big, you know, big shoes left left by, by, by Ryan as well. So if you look at how he's gelled himself with the Black Dahlia sound, written some phenomenal uh, songs on this record, great solos, how are you feeling right now, now that the record is done, recording is done, and fans are going to get to hear it in the next couple of weeks? How are you feeling about his contribution to this album? Oh, man, I love I love what he did. I love the state of the band right now. I think that uh, his addition just, I don't know, it just brought us up to another level even. you know, I, I think that... Uh, that Ryan probably couldn't have predicted how well he would have gelled in, you know, and Ryan was the one that selected Brandon to come into the band. And, uh, it's just been, it's been tremendous. You know, uh, we didn't predict that he was going to write songs for the record. Uh, that, that was just like an added bonus. And, um, he ended up writing four tunes and they're absolutely killer. And, you know, they, uh, they represent what we're about, but I feel like he's, you know, brought in a lot of cool elements, uh, some um, new wave of British heavy, heavy metal, some sleazy uh, winger rocking riffs, you know, uh, definite stuff we haven't done, but, um, you know, he's married it into our sound in such a great way. And, uh, yeah, man, his leads are incredible. I think that he's uh, turning a lot of heads already with just that one lead on one song. I think the fans see him as a uh, kind of a common ground between John, our old lead player, and Ryan, you know, so he has like a tremendous emotional feel, but is also very technical and uh, very, um, you know, musically educated. So it's like, uh, I don't know, man, it's a dream right now to have, you know, his energy in the fold. And he just turned 25, you know, and he's uh, outstanding on stage. He's definitely lit a fire under the rest of our asses to try to keep up with him. All of us old guys, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I couldn't be more excited about this dude. And, and now... 
this will be the first time that his own music is getting out to the world on an album. So um, I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the praise he's going to get. You know, he's, he so deserves it. He's an incredible player. He's one of the best uh, lead players in metal that, as far as I can see, you know. Uh, I love how you guys end the record. You know, with the lonely disease again, you know, great solo by Brandon in it. Oh, is it something that goes on in your mind? Because I look back at you know, when I look back at your your your, your catalog, be it in the in, in the form of Nocturnal or even in Ever Black, the Map of Scars or even the Abysmal, there's a certain way in which you end the record. Some of like some somehow I feel that some of your best songs are actually the last songs on all these records which I just mentioned. So the same goes with The Lonely Deceased. I feel that you guys have this great ordering um, ideas probably that you have in your mind that how the songs are to be placed, where it's going to make an impact, where you can just kind of keep it a bit balanced and then get back to aggression. Do you, is it something you spend a lot of time arranging the tracks because it's perfectly executed on almost every Black Dahlia record? Uh, thanks, man. It's definitely something we put a lot of consideration into. And uh, I think you can tell when you're hearing the last song. Uh, when, when, when I hear it for the first time, I go, wow, this has some end vibes, you know, like uh, a really dramatic closer, I think is important. Uh, you want to end on a really strong note that just makes people go, wow, you know, and The Lonely Deceased is a freaking killer song. It's a uh, uh, when we were working on that song, it was called Mano Cold because it was part Mano War and part black metal. <laughs> but uh, I love how melodic it is. And uh, it's, uh, you know, Brian, um, he really outdid himself with that song. It has uh, so many melodies going on at the same time. Uh, both guitars and bass are all doing different things. And, um, you know, it's just so you know neoclassical and and cool and but yeah you know we we really really pay attention to how the album is going to play out dynamically and try to make it a super to try to make it an experience when it's all together you know what i mean like a, a ride so that's that's kind of why we're more focused on quality than quantity you know we, we do have short albums but they're also very dense you know what i mean there's there's not any backbeat there's never any relent in a black dahlia song so we don't want to kill the person on the other end of the stereo you know what i mean but we want them to make it through the album and feel satisfied like that we've done enough different ideas enough memorable parts enough catchiness to make it satisfying as a whole you know absolutely man absolutely agree with that and you guys are touring machines you know you did the nocturnal uh, anniversary tour and obviously uh, the suffocation tour is coming up as well where else are you taking this record i can only imagine how good these songs are going to turn out live uh yeah you know that's something that we've kept in mind in in recent years is uh how songs are going to sound live you know what i mean you want to keep it so they can be understood and digestible you know even though we're a fast band and a technical band you have to draw the line at you know you have to think about how they're going to sound coming out of festival speakers outside and things like that you know but uh yeah I, i'm really excited to get out there and be playing the new songs and and like you said um i, I don't know where this record's going to take us yet you know it's it's not out yet so you know when we when that first week hits and and it rocks the charts then we'll have a better idea of what the future is going to hold and and some doors are going to open for us i think you know this is like a really big jump that's exceeded our expectations so you know i'm hoping that we can get to be the opening band on some bigger tours you know dimu or 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 slayer or you know behemoth or something like that you know that's what we're praying for you know we're always headlining but what we want is to get more exposure, you know what I mean? To still think still think about the growth of the band and, and evolving in that way, you know. But I see that uh, the stars are aligning, man. So if this does what I think it's going to do, I, you know, I think it could really open doors for us this, these two years. And we could see, you know, doing some things that we just couldn't do before. Awesome, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad and I hope that happens as well. So, you know, you saw recently 
uh, about the the decapitate in fact i'm sure you would have come to uh, uh, know what happened uh, today that they've been charged with the rape so you know you you guys do uh, all the tours you have your own tour bus uh, i'm sure you guys would be more uh, aware of who's entering and who's leaving beat fans or beat media coming for interviews you know there there could be anything that can go wrong and then the band gets accused has any of that happened or do you, how do you feel about this entire thing that's happened with decapitated uh, i mean we've been fortunate there hasn't been anything crazy like that and but we also haven't um transgressed in that way either you know what i mean so it's really i, I don't know what to think about it or what to say it's um you know it's it's sad it's 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 horrible you know it's a horrible thing it's I feel, you know, I feel bad for everybody involved honestly and uh I wonder if it'll if it's ever going to play out truthfully or or not, you know what I mean? Cuz you know just it going to court doesn't mean it's going to come out truthfully, you know. And and so they're stuck in the wrong country. Uh, you know, being Europeans it, getting stuck outside home is always uh it it impacts a lot. Right. and the the most recent details to come to life about all of them refusing dna that does not look promising man that does not look good in their favor so i just hope whatever the truth is comes out soon and if the band is clean you know they get because they their recent recent album was phenomenal man i loved it it was really great and seeing them live on tour that was fabulous i just hope everything goes fine and you know i yeah i just hope it's not true you know what i mean i hope it's not true on both you know i hope for both people that it, you know it's just i don't want that to happen to anybody and you know i don't want any band to burn wrongly at the stake either you know so i don't know man I, it's it's hard to touch with a 10 foot pole really with for me definitely so you got to sum up the record in just one sentence night bring us what would you say exciting exciting after a long time oh dude yes uh, more than ever man i think that my excitement never never wanes for the band you know uh seeing as how things keep growing at this uh you know this slow rate uh, more fans keep coming in the band keeps charting higher and uh it, it feels like my dream hasn't hit a ceiling yet you know uh so i have to take this thing to the utmost extreme and brian and being the other original member the two of us just had this pact that we'll never stop and that we will never compromise you know that that there will never be something that gets in the way of doing this this will always be the priority so seeing that we can still you know take it to new heights and be exciting people after all these records and all this time and all these like different trends that have come and go it's unreal you know it's so i'm very excited i'm very happy to be here i'm glad man i hope the the, the record crosses all the expectations you have and and crashes all the charts thank you so much trevor Right on. Thank you so much.